In our text today, Jesus is telling his disciples that if you give even a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty in his name, with his authority, with his love, there is a great reward. But to fully understand the context of what Jesus is saying, we must go back to the beginning of this conversation. So keep your Bible open there. Let's go to the front of chapter 10. At the beginning of Matthew chapter 10, Jesus calls the 12 disciples and he gives them a special assignment. He tells them that he is sending them out to do what he had been doing. Up to that point, only Jesus was healing the sick and cleansing the lepers and casting out demons and raising the dead. But now he's called the 12 disciples and he actually mentions them each by name. And he's saying, now I'm authorizing you to do the same thing that I've been doing. They're probably thinking, how can we do what Jesus does? But they were able to do what Jesus sent them to do because, first of all, he gave them power. I want you to write down some notes today that I believe are going to be extremely helpful to you. Starting with power. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits, demons, to cast them out. He gave them power to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Before I move on, I did want to ask. We had special guests here on Sunday night and a wonderful time of worship and prayer time. Is there anyone here that was healed or had uh, God do something significant in your life on Sunday night? Anyone? Daisy? Daisy? Why don't you stand and tell us what God did to you, through you? Got healed of migraines? Wow. You've been praying for this for a long, long time. Don't give up praying because God has a timeline. Come on, let's thank Him that He's still the God that heals all kinds of diseases. Anybody else have a significant moment on Sunday night? Well... As thankful as I am for guests and friends who are anointed that have come from Ireland, how many know we don't have to wait on Irish friends that are anointed to see the power of God released in this building? And in fact, we're going to see more of this, Lydia. We're going to see more of this, Daisy. We're going to see more of this, church. Why? Because of this one word. Somebody say it out loud. Because of power. Jesus gave the twelve disciples very specific instructions. Pick it up at verse number five. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them. No guesswork here. Go nowhere among the Gentiles. This was for the Jews, this particular assignment. And enter no town of the Samaritans. Rather... Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Thank you, Eric, Pastor Eric. Thank you so much for reminding us that we need to be lifting up Israel in prayer. No matter where you stand politically, we're not talking about politics here today. We're talking about praying for the country and the people of Israel. And we're also praying for the Palestinians who are being used as pawns in this. But how many believe that God could cause an end to this war very quickly and let peace reign? He's sending out the twelve and he says to them, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he tells them this, heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the leper and cast out demons. You receive without paying, so give without pay. He goes on to say that if they don't receive you, just shake off the dust and go to the next town. 
Don't get caught up on people saying stuff about you. Just shake off the dust. Come on, somebody stomp on the ground just a little bit. Shake off the dust and just keep on moving. Because not everybody is going to receive your word. Not everybody thinks that what you think is right and how you believe is right. There's a whole world out there. They think we have lost our minds. And I don't mind confessing that they're right. I did lose my mind and I needed to lose my mind and now I have a new way of thinking. I got a renewed mind. I'm a new creation. And I think differently than the way I used to. So yes, I do believe in a God that I've never seen. Yes, I do believe in a God that I've never heard with my own ears. I was saved by faith, and I'm going to walk by faith. And if they don't believe it, come on, somebody, stomp the ground again. Just shake off the dust and keep moving. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us to people who are ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we can lead them to the Lord, and they will be saved, and they will be born again, and they will be a new creation. He sent them to do things that, quite honestly, they had never done before. And they couldn't do what Jesus was calling them to do in their own ability. I mean, Jesus is raising up dead people and casting out demons and healing all manner of disease, but none of them are Jesus. How are we going to do what you're calling us to do? This specific assignment. So not only did he give them a specific assignment, he gave them supernatural ability. Jesus gave them the power necessary to accomplish the assignment. And what was the power given, church? Come on, talk to me today. He gave them a special impartation of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the day of Pentecost had not yet happened. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured out on 120 and subsequently poured out on other groups of believers. The Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out. And so, the twelve disciples received a special impartation of the Spirit to accomplish the assignment that Jesus gave them. Well, I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to remind you today, that we have also been given a special assignment by Jesus. Some of the very last words that He spoke before He ascended to heaven. It's called the Great Commission. What is our assignment today, church? Go into all the world and make disciples. Preaching, teaching, baptizing, laying hands on sick people. And accomplishing all this is going to take supernatural power. Because I'm not Jesus and you're not Jesus. But he's calling us to do something that is beyond ourselves. Well, thankfully, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost, and it is available to all who will receive. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, let me encourage you as clearly and passionately as I can. You should be. You deserve to be. And you can be. Don't be afraid of this. Receive the gift of of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of tongues. Once you start speaking in tongues, you'll you'll be like, why was I afraid of that? Come on. And if you've been praying about being baptized in the Holy Spirit and you, you haven't spoken in tongues, you're wide open to it. Don't get frustrated. Your day's coming. Did you hear me? Your day's coming. Your day's coming soon, by the way. I believe it. With this new door that God has opened for you, there's all kinds of anointing that's coming to you, bank. 
yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to my, my youth pastor. Does everybody know this, my youth pastor, our youth pastor? And you know, you stepped out in faith. You stepped out in courage. Part of you wanted to kind of stay back. I, I know that. But you stepped out. And you know, when you step out, get ready to walk on water. I'm, I'm just telling you, you've stepped into something that's really good. How many stepped into something that wasn't so good before? <laughs> you stepped into something really good. And that fullness is coming to you, bank. That fullness is coming to you. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You need it, for one thing. For everything that He's calling you to do, you need it. Next, Jesus warns the disciples of persecution. Number two. Persecution. Let's talk about this just for a minute. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, Jesus said, I'm sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, mankind, people, for they will deliver you over to courts, flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. Listen to this, verse number 20. For it is not you who speaks, but the Holy Spirit of your Father who will be speaking through you. Again, it is important that we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us as well. Brother will deliver his own brother over to be killed. And the father will give his own child up. And children will rise up against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, shake off the dust and flee to the next. For truly, I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Persecution. You know, the disciples, they faced real persecution. I mean, look at, look at what the Bible highlighted here. Flogging. They're going to be dragged before the courts, dragged before the judges. Non-believing family members will rat you out. And you'll be killed because of it. Brother will give up another brother. A sister will give up another sister. Children will, will rat on their parents. Parents will rat on their, their children. Real persecution. Most Americans, most American Christians, let's say, don't really know persecution. I mean, we're blessed and we're spoiled. Could we just be real? Could we be honest today? We're blessed and we're spoiled. We get intimidated if someone makes fun of us for being a Christian. But Christians are being persecuted all around the world. And some are being killed because of their faith in Christ. Many are being killed because of their faith in Christ. And some of our missionaries, they can't even tell that they are Christian and they've got to keep their location a secret. We just say, pray for the Sfinbees, the Bartlotties. They are in a sensitive area of the world. I got a video coming from the Svenbees. Hopefully it will be here for next week. But when we roll their video, I have to stop the live stream for three minutes or however long their video is. Real persecution, folks. He gave them power and then warned them that persecution was coming. But not so they could be anxious and they could be fearful. Because then right after he warns them of the persecution, he says, 
Let me give you this. Number three, let me give you peace. Verse 26 of our text. He said, so have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that, you will, that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say it out loud in the light. And what you hear whispered, shout it on the top of the house. And do not fear. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. We gave him an easy job, didn't we, Pastor Peter? Even the hairs of your head. Look how big our God is. Come on, somebody. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. He says it one more time. Fear not. Fear not, therefore, for you are more valuable than sparrows. Three times, Jesus speaks peace to the twelve. He says, have no fear, do not fear, and fear not. I have found that fear is one of the most common weapons in the enemy's arsenal. Anybody else found that to be true? He's just always firing this particular dart in our hearts and in our minds, trying to make us fear. He used fear to try and keep Joshua from stepping up to a new level of leadership after Moses died. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Don't fear. Just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Don't fear. Don't fear. Now, he used fear here to try and intimidate the disciples and keep them from their assignment. They were probably already wondering how this is going to happen. I've never laid hands on sick people and they were healed. This was a new assignment, a special assignment with a special impartation of the Holy Spirit. They'd watched Jesus perform this way. Now he's calling them to do it. I bet their hearts were racing. But he speaks peace to them. Fear may be one of the most common weapons in the enemy's arsenal, but I'm thankful today that peace is one of the most generous gifts in God's gift bag. Because we need His peace so often. The peace of God that will come to our hearts and our minds. A peace that doesn't make sense and you can't explain to other people when it comes. How many need peace right now? You need peace. There's not peace in your life and you need it right now. Let the peace of God come to you. The gift of peace. He used fear against Joshua. He used fear against the 12 disciples. And he will use fear on us to try to keep us from doing what God has called us to do. I'm afraid to witness, some, might say, some may say. I'm afraid to preach, another might say. By the way, I heard Trevor did such a great job at Young Adults on Thursday night. Love that, buddy. Love it. And I think that was the start of something fresh in you. I think God has repositioned you. That call remains, and the, the anointing grows stronger in your life. And, and we're here to help you, all right? We're here to cheer you on. And, and just see what God does. Watch what God does through this young man. It's going to be powerful. Um, right up out of the house too. Right? God's raising up missionaries. But he's also just raising up ministers. Trevor's a minister of the Lord. And we're excited to see that buddy. Some may say I'm afraid to talk to my co-workers about the Lord. I'm afraid to tell my neighbor about Jesus. I'm afraid to start that new ministry that God keeps putting in my heart. But God didn't give us a spirit of fear, La Palma Christian Center. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind or self-control. 
So when fear comes, just remind the enemy, that's not from God, and here's what God promised me. He didn't give me that spirit of fear. He gave me love, power, and a sound mind. When the enemy gives fear, God gives peace. Write that down. When the enemy gives fear, God gives peace. And then finally, as I close this message, Jesus talks to his disciples about a prophet's reward. Back to our original text. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. In other words, we're connected. We're one. I'm with you, you're with me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Jesus is letting them know that if they can endure the persecution and rely on the Holy Spirit in that moment, if they will not allow fear to keep them from the assignment and embrace the peace of God when that fear does come, they can do great things for the kingdom. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, raise up the dead. These are great and glorious things. Then he says something that contrasts all of that. Even if you give a simple cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty, there is a great reward. Just a cup of cold water. Do you know how many thirsty people there are around you? thirsty people. Hunger and thirst is a real thing. And you don't have to go to a developing country to see hunger and thirst. There are hungry and thirsty people right here in the United States and certainly in California. Our homeless neighbors, Jacob, Amanda, they increase weekly, I suppose. No longer do we have to go to the worst areas of L.A., let's say. You can see homeless neighbors just about anywhere you go, including La Palma. So there is the actual physical ministry to those who are hungry and thirsty. But of course, there's a spiritual aspect to this as well. So many thirsty, hungry people, thirsty people. Sadly, they're starving. Spiritually speaking, they don't even know it. They don't even understand it. Elliot used to say this when he was the youth pastor. Something like this. We have what you're looking for. You see, people are searching. People are hungry. People are thirsty. And we have living water. I just wondered what might happen if each of us actually gave a cup of cold water to somebody that's thirsty.
Let's not talk about doing the great big things for God if we can't do this. It has to start here. So I have a challenge for you, church. Challenge for us. Because again, we're not just building our lives, we're building the kingdom together. La Palma Christian Center is our home. This is our home church. So together we're going to do some things for the kingdom. Globally, locally, right here on this very property. And we're not going to pass by the thirsty. We're going to be sensitive to the thirsty. We're going to give a cup of cold water 